<laughs> Thank goodness he asked me. Anyway, good evening and welcome to the Red Room. Um, tonight, as I've typed here in the corner, we have week one of talking about the six modules of lifestyle design. So I wanted to cover the first two modules tonight and then we'll kind of recap next week on the second module. So the first module has to do with your the very first thing that we know is most important and that's your physical health. Um, so the first one is your physical health and fitness and if you've printed out that handout to go with the 18 building blocks, those are the foundational three building blocks right down here at the bottom, the red triangle and the two squares. So then your second handout is a chart where you can start taking notes and setting the goals that you want for the lifestyle design um, you're creating now. Um, notice it's there. You can download it and print it out as many times as you want so that you can rewrite your goals or when you're ready, perhaps a year from now, to check in with yourself and to write new ones. Now, I don't know about you. I started, I learned about writing down my goals when I was about 28, 29 years old. And I found it in a book. And I was beside myself. It was such a magical idea to me. Nobody had told me about it. I was just reading about it. Now, that's 30 years ago. So I, it was an inspiration to me because it asked me to think about things and to quantify what I wanted and in a way where nobody had ever really asked me to consider or opened the doorway for me to consider the things that I really wanted. And uh, it, was, it was a delicious process because it was just me with me. I did that. Within two years, I left California. That's, I was still living in California. Left California, moved to Texas, ended my marriage, um, started new friendships here, and um, moved into a new job, a new community. So there were a lot of changes. And as order would have it, as providence would provide, seven years later, I came upon those goals that I had written down. And as I went through them, Partly, I assumed that I had determined my direction and I would have achieved some of those things. But when I wrote them down, I thought, oh, how can I ever do that? But seven years later, it was, it, it set me back. Uh, I looked at how powerful it had been and how many of those goals I had reached. There were quite a few pages of them and they were quite exacting. And truth to tell, seven years later, I'd achieved about 75% of those goals. So you and I have heard about goals now. It's much more popular than it was 30 years ago. And I'm devoted to this, both in the written form and in the visual form. So I wanted to create a guide to help you step by step to make sure that you're looking at all the levels that I think are critically important to every person to have uh, those as a building blocks for a healthy lifestyle. <clears throat> so the very first one, we'll talk tonight about the first two levels, the first being the physical, the second being the sense of belonging in your home and in your community. And if you notice Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Erickson's developmental stages, and um, other models that talk about a person's growth through their life, including you know, the hero's journey. Um, the very beginning is physical health. So the very first is to look at, and notice there are three, three um, areas of this. The first one is what, what have I developed inside of myself? What are my internal abilities? my internal abilities in terms of understanding mentally, of my emotional intelligence, of my physical self-mastery. And then the next one is 
So the first one is over here, my internal abilities. The one in the middle is my purpose. This is how I express my abilities in the world, how I grow myself in my ability to express myself and to, in essence, behave myself, to know myself as I um, move into expression. I'm not just holding it inside, but now I'm living it. And then the third line over here is my mission, and that is how I take that and I ser serve the world with those capabilities. And those are the first three building blocks of a lifestyle design. Now, I wanted to share with you, um, you can, if you would like, download my lifestyle design, the men's version or the woman's version, from um, my blog, one of my blogs. And let me just copy that here for you. There you go. So you can print. Now, here's the cover of the woman's version and the cover of the men's version. So here's the woman's lifestyle design guide, and here's the man's version of the lifestyle design guide. So it has these um, models in it, and yet more information to guide you as you think through it. So that's freely available to anybody who wants to go there, download it and print it and use it. And um, I would love to hear from you if you decide to do that or share it with your children or your friends or colleagues. So let's look at this today. And I'm interested in any questions you have or any uh, suggestions that you have, because this, of course, is just um, a quick introduction. We could spend probably the entire evening on one of these blocks because there's so much potential in each one of these elements of who we are in the process of our unfolding life. So the first one is internally. How are you doing with your physical health and fitness? Now, number one, your sleep. And we know that sleep is sometimes troublesome. And if you have problems sleeping, and that means too little sleep, and sometimes people have too much sleep. And you know that if you're sleeping too much, oftentimes your, your body is too tired for some reason or another, whether you've been exhausting yourself, or you're allergic to something, or you're emotionally depressed, or you don't like your life and you just want to escape. So watch it when you sleep too much and figure out how to solve that problem. And when you sleep too little, of course, there are things that you're taking too seriously, problems that you can't figure out how to solve, worries, worry, mentally worrying habits that you have that keep you from sleeping. So I would like you to be aware of your sleeping and to solve the problem. Don't just notice that you're either not sleeping or you're sleeping too much. Set a goal on your goal sheet of I need to um, figure out, look for the solution of how to get my sleep in order. Because if that's the very beginning. If we don't have our sleep in order, everything else above that is going to be affected by it. So then um, we want to make sure that, and, and I know that talking with doctors and phys experts in the physical world, um, they say that your physical activity, your ability to move and be strong and flexible and alive and fit with moving your body is even more important oftentimes than food, than nourishment. I think of um, moving your body as a way to keep all the aliveness in the cells kind of nourished and stimulated so that it's it's not stagnating. and. Each one of us needs to find the way that we keep ourselves fit. And now, here's, here's uh, one of those lovely things that happens. So if we're looking for all three of these areas, if we find something that fits into all three, and even more than those, then we know that that's something that we want to fit in the lifestyle design. 
So um, um, one of the things that I have discovered at this point in my life that fits in the physical health part is I am perfectly suited to water aerobics. Deep water aerobics is my deal nowadays. Used to be yoga, then it was like um, jazzercise and um, aerobics and Pilates, things like that. Now um, I've worked with a physical training long, trainer long enough to really know um, the function of my body and I know how to use water aerobics to um, keep whatever um, muscle group I need to strengthen uh, alive and strong and flexible. So do you know, know which kind of exercise, which way of moving your body is good for you? And one of the other things that's very good for me but isn't always typically in my life is um, dancing Argentine tango with Jack. Now that takes me in all three of those categories. Um, so the internal one over here, no, no, I've got, I've got my hand turned around. <laughs> I can't think backwards. Um, this one is mastery inside, which means I've learned to dance. This one in here is that I dance. And this one over here is that I dance with Jack. And we have a community of people in the Argentine tango world whom we foster as friends. So Argentine tango, therefore, um, needs to be kept alive and moving in my life because it goes through all three of those levels of keeping myself physically fit. So notice that the distinction between the middle one, which is expressing, and that's your purpose, to grow yourself. And then the third one, which is doing something where you fit into your community into the world of other people, which is serving the community. Showing up and contributing is really serving your community in some way. Um, so are you safe and secure? Are you physically safe and secure? Um, is your home safe and secure? Where you work, is it safe and secure? Is it secure for your kids? And if it isn't, that's a stressor all the time. And that would be a goal that would, you would want to set for yourself. And then how safe and secure are you inside with your ability to have um, resistance, which means saying no to things that aren't good for you, or um, saying resisting your own bad habits. Do you have that ability to resist inside and to say no? I'm not going to do this, I'm going to choose this. That is an internal ability to keep ourselves physically healthy that's sometimes difficult to create. And I know, for example, if internally you don't have the resistance skills, then part of your expression may be the bad habit of smoking or eating the wrong foods. And that means then your purpose in how you express is to... Um, use whatever uh, ability you have in the world that works for you to stop your smoking. And I do know that one of my favorite things is a hypnosis and a really good hypnotist. And some people don't believe in it, but I can't recommend it highly enough. It's one of the ways to reach your own unconscious system and school yourself in the internal way so that you have your own resistance mechanism um, refined for what you need. Um, your good trust radius. Now this is about physical health in the sense of are you too anxious about things or do you have a good trust radius where you're pretty, you're pretty clear about um, where you live, the people you're around, and you're comfortable that you can trust them, you know how to trust them, and if um, there's a place where they're influencing your life negatively, where your physical health is being um, somehow brought down. So if somebody's negative all the time, it's affecting your health. It's a stressor. And you need to be able to trust yourself to have the ability to say no um, and to hold that trust radius so that you not only let people in that are um, 
necessary for your health and happiness, but that you can keep out and say no to the ones that affect you negatively. So then you want that ability internally, and then the next part, which is the one here that's in the middle, is you need to be able to express it. So that you need to be able to trust yourself and the others in your life. You need to be responsible for taking care of what you need in terms of your physical health. Um, you want your money, to, I mean your money and your home, um, whatever it is to keep you physically safe and healthy, to be able to be um, intelligent with that and um, to handle that reasonably like um, a pretty healthy adult would do. Sometimes we make mistakes and that's okay. That's why we're here. We make mistakes and then we figure out what to do to solve that problem. If we avoid solving the problem, then that's a goal to set here. It's like, write down, okay, I need to solve the problem of saying no to somebody that makes me feel negative. Um, a good body image. This is an expression of yourself where you've got a grounded ability to accept yourself being not perfect and yet accept yourself as being fit or accept yourself as being unfit and set goals on how to get in that direction. Recently I mentored someone on um, really not no longer avoiding needing to lose weight because um, she had gained a lot of weight and it was very logical why um, there were people influencing her life and I want you to um, know that a study has been done the seven people closest to you whatever their average income is whatever their average weight is whether it's overweight underweight or good fitness though the seven people closest to you oftentimes you are an average of those seven and that means that you want to surround yourself with people who are healthy people who are behaving themselves like healthy adults. When they're around you, they inspire you to your own best, and you inspire them to their best. Isn't that powerful and lovely? Okay, so then um, we want good recreation, and that means something that you do that's recreational. Maybe it's running, maybe it's um, going to a class, maybe it's involvement in some sport or other, um, but to set your goal for what is it that you want next in terms of self-mastery. Maybe you want to take, um, you want to have a, a private coach teach you better in swimming. Maybe you want to um, join a tennis match or tennis uh, club. Maybe you want to start golfing again. And then that takes us into the third column, which is expressing it in your community. And you and I know that healthy people thrive faster and better when you're in a healthy physical community. And that means that um, you involve yourself, like on a swim team. And like um, I knew someone who was on a older master swim team. Um, he was in his 60s. And even still, he was on a swim team where they would travel out of state and, and create friendships that way. Keeping fit, but also having friends with um, the same interest, the same devotion to keeping themselves fit that way. Or being um, joining a golf club if you really like golfing. And keeping yourself fit, so it's taking care of your physical fitness, but it's also um, bringing you into contact with people of like mind who like the same sport. And then guess what? You're hitting your goals at more than one level. When you have something like golf that you love, it's going to fit into many of the building blocks in life. And therefore, you can't avoid wanting to place that as a goal in your life if you don't already have it. So how does this sound? Um, thank you, dear viewers, for tuning in.
and I'm wondering if you can relate to this. Are you starting to write goals? I'd like you to, tonight, while you're watching, to write a goal in each one, in um, at least one in each of the three columns. Your internal need, that's a new goal you have for your physical health, fitness, and flexibility. A goal that you have to move it into the world, to move it into expression, and your own experience of yourself. And then the third one is to fit it some way into your community, into serving the world or friends or neighborhood or family with it in some form. Um, how does that sound? Have you got a goal or are you, is this confusing to you? Am I being clear enough? Does this make sense? Are you satisfied with your goals so far or do you need a little coaching or mentoring? Um, Type me a message and let me know. Because, um, oh, I have to tell you what I've written in mine, the goal that I've written in mine, which is, this is actually the goal sheet from the Lifestyle Design Guide. And um, I know that I'm close to being, I am being, I am overdue for a vacation. And so um, the way I take care of myself is I've decided that I need a two-week break. So that's in the first column. The second column is, I want a two-week vacation. And the third column is, I am setting a goal um, to, to do that. And I'm looking at either um, going to someone's home. You know how there's the Home Away program where you can rent um, someone's home or a part of their home. Rather than going to you know, just a hotel or a retreat or something, I'd like to be in a private home in a beautiful place or on a cruise where I get pampered. So that's those are the goals that I've listed for myself in the physical fitness and health um, level of the Lifestyle Design Guide. So there you have that one. Um, viewers, have you got one? Are you good to go to the next one or have you, have you got questions? Somebody chime in and tell me that you're doing good, okay? <laughs> and thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. So the next one has to do with your tribe, how you belong. So this, this um, goal sheet, this is the um, kind of orangey-yellow one. And over here, this is the belonging. This is the community support. This is how you experience yourself in your own personal tribe. So if you think about it developmentally, we need to be physically fine. Then the next, we need to feel connected. We need to feel, you know, like um, in when a baby is born. And Jack and I right now have two new grandchildren little little ones and it's beautiful to see their parents moving through the bonding process where um, we bond with our family we need to develop that that healthy natural attachment to our own tribe and usually it's in the beginning to our own family our moms and dads and siblings grandparents aunts and uncles and then expand that a little bit to the neighbors, aunts and uncles, cousins. So that's the next thing we need in order to be healthy and happy is to have those connections and to have a feeling of our own tribe. Sometimes that's being happy at home. And most people have that where they want to belong in their home with their family. Sometimes people have troubles and problems in their family. Sometimes um, people are adopted. Sometimes there are blended families. Sometimes there's a divorced family. And um, sometimes you just don't feel like you belong in your family. And that's true too, where they're kind of different from you and you don't share the same interests. You don't quite feel like you belong in this tribe. Maybe you feel like you belong there in a certain way, and yet it's not your tribe. So be sensitive to yourself. 
let's look at you setting the goals for what you need in order to design your life the way it feels good to you. So this is the building block number four. Building block number four is happy at home. And I would like you to write goals for your bonding and belonging. So we want you to have the tribe where you have respect. You have internally uh, an ability to respect others, of course, that you've received respect and you give respect to yourself. A sense of belonging. This is my family. This is where I belong in a certain way. This is where I'm attached. This is where I have a bond. Sometimes you have a close family. Sometimes you have a kind of formal family. It just depends on your family. A sense of socially and culturally, what's your tribe? Um, you want to have cultural competence where you're pretty okay with different cultures and you know how to be respectful in those cultures. Um, how you have bonds with your friends, your peers, um, if you're a girl, your girlfriends, if you're a guy, your guy friends. And you want to make sure that you don't have too big a bond with them so that you're only hanging out with your friends because what I want for you is a lifestyle where you have bonds to seniors, maybe people older than you, maybe grandparents, maybe a boss, or maybe an older mentor. And I want you to also have bonds with your juniors, maybe your little brothers and sisters, maybe people who are um, junior to you in your profession or in your hobby. So you want to have that ability internally to be engaging, to feel comfortable uh, participating, to have a sense of being able to cooperate. Excuse me. <coughs> so that you have a cultural identity. That's internal. So that's building block number four. Building block number five now is how you express it in the world. You want a good sense of cultural and gender identity. You want to be comfortable being a woman if you're a woman. You want to be comfortable being a man if you're a man. You want to be comfortable being in the United States if you live here or in whatever country you live. <coughs> you want to have a good attachment. You want to be able to interact with the people in your family. And that means while you're a child or a teenager that you're attached in your family and you get along well in your family and that you know how to be good with the figures who depend on you and good the, with the figures whom you depend on. So no, you want to handle your quote unquote issues if you have issues with authority figures. You want to handle those issues if you have them about you know your juniors and feeling like maybe you're jealous or sensitive to that. I want you to set goals to handle that. And then um, your social skills. Are you have you figured out how to conduct yourself socially so you're not scared to go to a movie by yourself? You're not um, threatened or uncomfortable going to a social event or a social gathering you know how to handle yourself there. You want those abilities developed. So if you don't have those, write, write it in this middle block here about which ability you need to refine. You know, I'm, I, I want to be um, more comfortable, not so nervous when I go into a social setting where I don't know anybody. I want to figure that one out. And goodness knows there are resources everywhere to help you um, improve that ability. And then the last one, um, block six, your social community. This is your mission, how you experience yourself socially in the sense of belonging in your community. <clears throat> and this is in a certain way, not only the sense of being able to contribute to your community, but also um, having your community experience your presence as something that's positive and um, helpful in some way. Um, 
somebody typed just one letter and I'm wondering now some I know that in the past some of my viewers have tuned in and they don't know how to sign in or they don't know how to type um, if you're having problems with that that's not okay it should be very simple it should be very easy so um, email me let me know call Jack um, if you can't type oh good we've got somebody here um, who's obviously oh good we got a couple of people good that you're able to type in excellent welcome dears um, listening to you talk about being at ease in social situations made me realize realize that I am <laughs> and so you've got that particular building block nicely done in your lifestyle design so then what I would want you to do is I would want you to up the level for yourself. If you're, if you're comfortable in social situations, you've got that developed. Now the next thing is, is the next building block, which is number six, six, and that's mission and service in the world. Let me see here. Um, hello, it is easy, good. Least comfortable at home. Hmm, I am least comfortable at home. Ha. Huh. Well then, who's at home? Are you least comfortable because you're alone there? Or are you least comfortable because you're having a hard time getting along with somebody? Because that's definitely a goal that you want to set. You, all of us, need to be able to come home. I think about it this way. My quality of life is really reflected by what it's like coming home. Here, and this is my home office. Here is where all my all my favorite things are. My favorite guy is coming home. Is <sighs> home. That's what we need at home. And if you're least comfortable at home, you've got some goals to set, dear ones. What a realization, Heather! You made me suddenly realize this. No kidding. Ha! Thank you. That's great. Um, so there are a lot of different things why you couldn't be comfortable at home. I remember my sister at one point lived in a house where there was black mold and she was highly allergic to it. She definitely was not comfortable at home, which means she had to move out and do something about it. And that was not easy and it took a long time. So that was a huge goal for um, my sister when she had to do that. So. Um, and right now, I suddenly am very sad, very, very sad. Oh, sweetheart. Um, so immediately, you're grieving something. You're noticing something that you hadn't um, decided to improve. Once you get that sadness, the sadness is a sign that you care, that you love something, and that something that you love has been compromised or has been lost or broken. And then that means reason, probably crying a little bit to work through um, the process of the sadness, grieving it a little, and then being able to heal that and say, all right, what's the goal? What is it that I need to do? The goal that I'm going to set is to find more happiness at home, and here's how I'm going to do it. I can't believe that I never realized it before. Well, thank you so much. Instantly, you're giving me some feedback that this, my building blocks model, is, and this is what I hoped, dear hearts, I hoped that this model of the lifestyle design reminds us of the building blocks that need to be improved and that we forgot were there. Okay, let's see. Um, something you said triggered a sudden stream of deep emotion in me. And I would say, dear heart, write it down, journal it. The, when you have, when we experience deep emotion, it has a sacred message for us. So I would want you after the red room today, if possible, to stay here with your computer, get yourself a notebook. And my favorite one, of course, is a notebook that's just a spiral bound and um, use it kind of this this is the way I use it I use it 
just writing on the one side and not the back side, but write down all the feelings, all the sadness, and let the sadness speak and um, make friends with it. Find out um, what it has to tell you, what you have to learn from the sadness. Because this is a sacred thing. And um, that means that you're ready to learn something new and very important. And when you listen to the sadness and you let it speak to you, then um, it will teach you. Immediately it will teach you and you can go underneath it and find out what it is that you long for or what it is that you find sacred that's been compromised or abandoned or just ignored or unmet. Um, is there a topic for tonight or is it okay to blurt out a question? <laughs> Thank you. There's a topic, yes, and it's always okay for you to blurt out a question. So yes and yes. The topic for tonight is, um, and I know uh, some of you have tuned, had to tune in late, we're looking at my lifestyle design guide, which includes this lifestyle design model, the 18 building blocks. And we're just finishing up on building block number six, which is now your goals for, for bonding and belonging. Looking at this one over here, which is number six, how you belong in your community. And one of the things I mentioned early, what, earlier was like belonging in a community where um, you feel a sense of your own tribe. It could be that, um, like for example, I just, uh, someone recently joined a horse owners association. That's her tribe. Or someone has just um, uh, joined a, a golf club and that's one of her tribes. Or, um, a guy has just um, signed up for a hockey league. That's one of his tribes. So you want to take it into the community and be with people. Have a tribe and a sense of belonging with people who do what you like. Um, as a musician, finding your tribe, whether you're helping out at the symphony or you're playing a guitar in a rock band or you're mentoring kids on the, on the uh, marching band, in how to improve their percussion. Some way that you connect with your social community with teamwork, parenting, mentoring your juniors, um, connecting with your elders, entertaining them, passing on your cultures and uh, your cultural traditions, things like that. So that's the topic for tonight and now we've looked at the sixth building block of your lifestyle design. And I hope that you've printed your, out your handouts for tonight and you're writing in something where you're saying, oh my gosh, this is what I need and this is what I want to do next week or in the next year. So um, please blurt out your question. I'm so interested in what it is that you want to know. Um, that's what the Red Room is for. I'll always have a topic and something that I can talk about ad infinitum for you. And I'm always interested in those of you who show up for my broadcast and who have a question right on, um, right on the tip of their tongue and they want to ask or share. Let's see what we got, dear. Okay. I'm having obsessive thoughts about a relationship that has ended. How can I stop this persistent compulsion to contact this person? I feel devastated. A soulmate lost. Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Um, that's so hard. Um, when you feel as if you've lost a soulmate, um, that could be one of those things that is truly a tragedy and it may be a lifetime tragedy. And um, it requires that we grieve. And in order to grieve, we have to let go. And you're absolutely right. The compulsion to think about this person is the part of you that doesn't want to let go, is the part of you that says, wait a minute, this is something sacred and precious and why would I ever dream of letting go? And so 
that compulsion is keeping that bond alive with your thoughts, even if the person has rejected you, has moved on to another person, has died, um, or has just said, uh, this has not turned out the way I wanted it, and um, I'm gone. Mm. Paralyzing sadness. Yeah. So that would be deep grief. And sometimes when grief is very, very deep, it can be what I call the dark night of the soul. And the dark night of the soul is a place where we have loss that's so dark we don't know how to get through it. We can't see the other side. And it's the place of the chrysalis, the chrysalis in the cocoon where it's dark, we don't know who we are anymore, and really and truly the only way out of this is through the dark process. And that means you are required to properly grieve. So what I would want for you is I would li like for you to go to a grief recovery group because the very first thing in grief, and as many of you know, I was a grief counselor for a long time and still am. It's just not my focus. Um, you need to tell your story. And when I would run a grief recovery group, um, we would sit down and I would ask just two things. I would say, what did you lose and when did you lose it? And then each person would tell the story of what they lost and when they lost it. And they would talk about the loss, tell the story of it. The first rule of letting go and grieving a loss is you've got to tell your story. And the kind of rule of thumb is you really need to tell it at least three times. Now you don't want to tell it, you know, 40 times, otherwise you're just getting lost in telling the story and not moving past it. Um, so you want to um, also, um, I'm just going to look here. I have a, a blog that's, um, let me let me look up the address for uh, my grief guide. And uh, you can go there and download my grief guide. You can also purchase it from my website. You, when, when you purchase it from my website, it, you download it right there. Um, but you can get some of my information from my blog on grief. And this is where you go, grief.wordpress.com. Um, it, it tells you about grieving, about how to do it. One of the things that's important for you to remember is that we can't grieve 24 hours a day. Grief is done in pieces. And that means you need to cry, and then you need to center yourself and go do something constructive, or something interesting, or something soothing, or something fun and funny. So as you're going through the grief process and letting, your, letting yourself move through this kind of paralyzing pain, yes, you're going to cry and grieve for some time. It may be for five minutes, it may be for an hour or two. And then you need to nourish yourself so that you can move through the next wave of grief. So you need to keep yourself nourished with food and recommended that you keep yourself connected with water, taking showers, taking baths, washing your face, swimming, whatever it is to get in the water. Um, taking care of your physical needs because grieving is exhausting. And um, one of the things for you to be aware of and if you download my grief guide, it, there is a, a workbook page there to help you. All the secondary losses that you've lost along with a soulmate, 
because there are many things in your life that you shared with that person and that those things are also lost. Sometimes it's your friends, sometimes it is your belonging or your social community. Sometimes, you know, if, um, if you've been together for a long time, you lose all, almost a part of almost everything. And this is one of the hardest parts. In a certain sense, it feels like we've lost a part of ourselves. We haven't really lost a part of ourselves, but whoever we are when we're with that person, unless we're with that person, we really aren't experiencing and expressing that part of who we are that was given life in that relationship. And so sometimes when the relationship is long or deeply developed, um, we're not sure who we are anymore. And that's uncomfortable and it's just uncomfortable. It, it's not destructive, it's only natural. And it takes time to find yourself again. Um, I also cannot say enough, dear, about journaling. As I said before with the other person, um, the most respectful way to honor your deep feelings is to give words to them and to put them down in hard copy on your journal. And if you express them that way, you can always go back to them. I don't recommend that you reread your journals very much. More I'm interested in you moving forward into the next page, into the next thought, into the next feeling. And in a certain way, um, tending to, making precious the things that you cared about by honoring them, by writing them down and preserving them. It's also releasing them to the page, releasing them in that way with your thoughts and feelings so that you can move on to the next thing. Because what we don't want is for you to get stuck in like this obsessive thinking about the other person, trying to, in essence, get them back or trying to get the connection back. Because if the relation is done and gone, the healthy thing is to let it go. So you're absolutely right in asking me this question. So it's important that you do things that you haven't done before and that you do the things that you did do before that you did that are good for you, happy for you, healthy for you. And that means doing things with friends. Maybe it means doing something new that you haven't done but you've thought about. For example, maybe that person didn't share a love of um, Italian cooking with you. And so then, not just going to have Italian food, but perhaps taking a, a cooking class, an Italian cooking class, where you don't have to do much other than show up, but you're with a new group of people doing something new that keeps you mentally stimulated with something that's positive and interesting and healthy. And, you know, yes, when you're alone, you'll probably cry some more. But please set your goals and of course, for tonight, these two systems of goals are critically important for you, dear, where um, the bottom is, and notice I've been mentoring you, is the, the first level is your physical level. The first three goals are taking care of your physical health. Then the next three are taking care of where you belong. And you do need support. You need to connect. And you don't want to connect with negative people. You don't want to connect with people who are, um, how do I say, going to blame and um, insult either you or your ex or try to get you back together again or judge or give advice or do whining or whatever. Stay away from those people and stay with the people who are happy, good, and kind and um, supportive of you in the healthiest ways. Is this helping, dear? Does this Can you relate to this bit of coaching? It will take you some time to go through the grieving and then the letting go. Um, when you're grieving, it really is like experiencing yourself in an emotional stew pot. I don't really have a lot of friends. Ah, so what does that tell me? That tells me you don't have a good enough support system and that the loss of your love was the loss of 
too big a chunk of your support system. So that means that one of your goals, and that's this second level, number four, five, and six, would be for you to find places where you belong and to go there and to foster those places. So it may only be on one new place, but that's all it takes. Just one place where there are people who have an interest um, that you share with them. Now, some people are saying, well, I'm not sure about my interests. So I want you to, I'm going to just copy this in here. I want you to email me if that's the case. You're not sure what your interests are, um, what, where you want to go to find a group of people that might be your tribe where you want to belong. Then email me from my passion list, and I put it right here. It's nine pages long, and you're, which is, I, I, I make it that long because I want to make sure you find something on there that it appeals to you. Now, there are people like one lady I worked with some time ago where she was very involved in her work. She's a very managerial level um, nurse and wonderful at her job and has been there for a long time, has made many friends there. That's her tribe. And what she was working on was she had, um, she had a very strong connection with her um, personal family tribe, but she didn't have anything in between those. She had the professional tribe and she had the home family tribe. But in between here, she needed another tribe. And that means looking through the passion list and finding something that you like. It could be scrapbooking, where, of course, you're not going to scrapbook about this relationship. You're going to scrapbook about somebody that you care about. Maybe even doing something for um, a child. Think about the children in school who don't get enough attention when there are too many kids in their family, or maybe it's a family with only one parent. And if you don't have a child in your life that um, is close to you, um, maybe you've got a niece or a nephew or a grandchild or um, a cousin that lives far away and you foster that relationship, or you join big brothers and big sisters and um, take some time to share with a child because that's the community service, that's the belongingness. Even if you don't have something strongly developed, there are always places to go where you can help out even with a, a little child, which is the, you know easy for most of us as adults. Um, maybe you can help out in one of these things on the passion list. Is this helpful? Does this uh, do you think that um, you can do this? Sometimes it's a church community. Um, sometimes it's a part, an extension of the company you work for, where they have a place where they serve the community. Um, let's see here. That seems so hard. I work alone, often, or with people every few weeks. I definitely believe that I need a tribe, but it seems so hard to find. Oftentimes, the volunteer work is a way, is a one-way giving. I need friends where there is a genuine sharing. Beautifully, beautifully put. Exactly. So now that you've said that, articulated that, maybe you hadn't said it to yourself before. Um, just like the lady earlier that said um, she felt a sense of sadness about um, what she needed in a tribe. Um, what you want to do now is look over here in this side and set some goals. You need to find a place to belong. It sounds like you're a... Let's see, what did you say? I have a very agile mind, but find myself bogged down by feelings. Uh-huh, absolutely. Now, one of the things I want to remind you of is you are not your feelings. I am not my feelings. My feelings are only a response to my thought process. So the feelings come from my mammal brain, the brain where I care. 
and my feelings will be there, but only because I have thought something. And this is the good news and the bad news, of course. And the, the bad news is, whatever you think about, that's what you're going to feel. But the good news is, if you decide to think about something constructive, like tuning into the Red Room tonight, you're, you're thinking this through, you're articulating this with me, and um, you're listening to me and, and um, using your agile mind. Like right now, you're probably not feeling anything because we're pursuing a line of reasoning that's interesting and uh, creative. So when you find yourself in bad feelings, the magical thing is like that, you will change your feelings by focusing your mind on something that's constructive and interesting. Now, if it's boring, it's not going to work because you'll go right back to those negative feelings. So you've got to feed your mind thinking about, and sometimes that means physically experiencing something that you care about or that's pretty um, involving. Okay, let's see what she says. It often seems as though the feelings create automatic thoughts. Of course they do. Because once you get into a feeling, then you think about the feeling, and then you feel the feeling more, and then it goes, it spirals down if it's a negative feeling. So then you get yourself going down, 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 and going into depression, right? At any point, you can interrupt that spiral by thinking about something different. And that's when you want to have a whole list of things ready to think about. From the very time I wake up until I lay my head down, yeah. And you will be thinking automatic thoughts unless you, my dear, from your heart and soul, from who you really are, have a whole list of things that you care about that you can refocus your mind on. So this is about mental self-mastery. That you decide, no, I'm not going to think about this. I don't want to feel bad right now. I'm going to grieve in an hour. And only let yourself grieve for 15 minutes or an hour and then say, okay, next. Now I'm going to think about something that's positive and lifts me up and gives me energy. <clears throat> I feel so paralyzed parking myself in front of the TV for hours just to numb out. Yeah. Doesn't work, does it? Just to numb out, that means you're avoiding being connected with your life and your grief and doing it creatively and artfully, dear. So, number one, number one, number one for you, sweetheart, is we want you moving your body. And I know it's hard. And it's a decision. And so moving your body, you've got to do something in a positive atmosphere uh, that's doable for you. It may just be going to the Y or the rec center and walking on the treadmill. There are other people beside you or getting on the bicycle. Other people beside you keeps you accountable and gets you somewhere out of your um, isolation. Isolation is one of the most um, depressing things in life. And if you're watching in front of the TV, it's kind of like just somebody slapped you in a closet and closed the door. That's against life, sweetheart. Um, don't do that. Get away from the TV as much as you can. And it's better if you don't watch TV. It's better if you um, rent funny movies. At least you've chosen what you're going to watch. Um, good. I've started an exercise program, 30 minutes running Light calisthenics, modified my diet, lots of water, but no change. Um, yeah. Sounds like you're alone, aren't you? So, yeah, that exercise program is going to help. But if while you're doing it, your mind is still obsessing, um, it's kind of like you're going through the motions. So what, what, what I'm advocating for you, dear, is... Whatever exercise you're doing needs to be much, you're obviously very bright. It needs to involve your mind. So that means maybe it's um, playing handball. Maybe you need to be that active somewhere or finding a tennis club that plays indoor when the weather is like this. Or um, doing something like being in a yoga class with a great yoga teacher. You know, there are a lot of them around. Find a yoga teacher so that you're with somebody 
somewhere and it's so um, it's so complex and rich in experience that it involves your very fine mind. Um, do you see what I'm talking about? It sounds like you've been trying some things, but it's not enough for a fine mind. When you have a fine mind, you need to give it a diet of nourishment that's worthy of um, the, um, how do I say this? Um, kind of like if, if you're allergic to something, you don't want to eat that. You want to nourish your, even if, even if it's a whole wheat bread, if you're allergic to gluten, you don't want to eat that. But you need the good nourishment. So yes, exercise, like you're saying, is good, but it's not working for you because you need more complexity, more meaning in how you're physically active. And that may mean that if you're running, you need to be running with a group of people and training for a triathlon. That's, you know, that's taking running to three levels higher. So there's running alone, and then there's running with a buddy. And then there's running with a group, and there's running in a, in a, for a, some kind of a, a, a run for a cause, and then there's running, you know, training for a triathlon, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to escalate to the next level, because what you're doing is kind of elementary for someone like you. Um, can you relate to that? You're going to have to design something that's very creative, very involving, and that reaches your heart and soul with something you care about. You know, if uh, your friend died of cancer and you're training for a walk for the, for to cure cancer and you're raising funds for that, then you're doing it for something meaningful in the name of your friend, which is a heart connection. You're raising money, which means you're contacting other people and you've got a competition going, etc. Um, does that make sense to you? That um, you're, you're feeding yourself a diet of pablum. It's not enough. You need, um, you know, Chateaubriand with lobster on top if you're going to be exercising. Um, yes, but I don't really have any friends. Yeah. And you know where you find friends, dear heart, and you need to find friends. Um, if you don't have any friends, then this is not a new thing. If you're typing to me, you're obviously over 20, probably. And if you don't have friends, um, something, um, you haven't set some goals and you haven't taken care of yourself. All of us, if we're going to be healthy, we've got to have girlfriends and if we're a guy, guy friends. So... That would be this one that we were talking about tonight. I would want you to set some goals right in here. This is what takes you into friendships, dear heart. Uh, creating a tribe is going to those things that you have passion about and being with the nice folks who have the same passion. Now, I want to tell you one of my favorite things in Dallas. It's so esoteric, but it's a, and I like it because it's such an es esoteric example. And I'll be darned, but I didn't see a post for it uh, in a Starbucks recently. Um, the Natural History Museum of Dallas has a whole team of people who are in love with archaeology. And they help the archaeologists go out on digs. Well, there's just been a new um, skeleton of a dinosaur discovered. And they're even putting posters in Starbucks saying, please, we need help. We need people to help us out on the, in the archaeological dig, digging up the bones of this di dinosaur that's been discovered in Texas. So it, even if all you're interested in is archaeological digs, there, are, there is a group of really nice people in Dallas where you can go and help them out. So does that make sense? If you're not sure where to find friends and what area you want to go into, email me. Email me for my passion list and then go through that passion list and have a dialogue with me online or on the telephone and I'll mentor you. Make sure we find something for you because where your loves are, the things that you love, whether it's quilting or soccer, that's where the nice people are and you begin to build friendships there. I just found one online. There's a place in Dallas that's Linus something or other, uh, a friend of mine is involved with it. They make quilts and blankets 
for little kids that are in the hospital and they need a blankie. Handmade quilts, handmade blankets. And you know that team of women, it's 90% women, uh, they find friendship there. Maybe not a long-term lifetime friendship, but there's friendship there. And we don't want you to have a zero to nothing concept about friendship. We find bits and pieces of friends all through our life. And this friend of mine has this interest that I do. This friend of mine has this interest that I do. And I'm fed by those friends in all those aspects of the things that I love about being a human being and being alive. Dear hearts, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And thank you, dear ones, for the questions that you asked. I know that it's, it's helped the other people who are viewing. And I hope that um, our discussion tonight has helped you set some specific goals and has given you some ideas for exactly what you want to go for in these first six building blocks of a lifestyle design. Thank you so much. Any last questions, dears, before we sign off from the Red Room tonight? I really appreciate you and I trust that this mentoring has given you some um, ideas for setting your own goals. <laughs> You're so welcome. You're so very welcome. Thank you for tuning in. I love the Red Room and I love having company. And I'll see you same time, same place next week for the next three building blocks. And that will be a positive sense of self. Let me just get that for you. Um, right here next week we're going to revisit oh look somebody said Heather thank you so much you give me the confidence to move forward oh bless your heart thank you for, thank you for letting me know so next week we're going to revisit and I'm going to see I'm going to ask you if you've uh, got some things that you're doing and then what we're going to do is um, go through seven, eight, and nine. And um, that is a positive sense of self, your identity. And that is your identity and confidence, your purpose for abilities, and your mission for mentoring. So I'm going to just put that in here. Because that's what we're, whoops. Did I do that again? I did. That's what we're going to talk about next week. Next week, I'm going to ask you about um, how you set up your fitness and your belonging. And we're going to go into creating a positive sense of yourself. Thank you, dears. And I'm signing up from the Red Room tonight. And um, I'll see you next week. Good night.